Well, if I haven't depressed you enough about all of the animals that can come in your garden and eat the food that you want to eat, uh, we'll continue on with bugs. Uh, slugs and snails are something that I have had to deal with when I had strawberries. Uh, they come in and they eat a lot of the leafy greens. They can eat some the soft flesh off of strawberries and other crops. So uh, it is something that you're going to probably have to deal with sooner or later as a gardener. The one thing that worked best for me, and I'll just start right off with it, is beer. So uh, do not get expensive beer. Slugs will go for cheap beer. Uh, you just put it in a little container and you put it uh, underneath where they are eating and they will come into the beer and they will drown. Um, another way if you don't want to do beer there are some alternatives uh, that you can make online and um, they have yeast and other stuff but I don't know how good those are. I haven't tried them. Um, a similar thing that you can do if you don't want to do beer is maybe put uh, like a hollowed out orange and um, they can go in there and they like the moist um, fruit inside and then you would trap them and then in both of those you have to come out daily to inspect it and see if uh, you have some slugs in there and um, dump those out and then and then put out some a new uh, bait for them to come to. Another one is salt. I don't recommend this because number one it seems like a really cruel way for uh, slugs to die. I'd rather have them drowned in beer personally. That seems like a little bit better way to do it. Um, but, it, but it is, it is, um, effective. Um, I would not put it right directly onto your soil. You could put it, um, next to it in some type of container, or if you were going to do pots, I would put this salt, uh, around the outside of the pot. And so they would cross over it coming into your pot. But this is something I would do only if I was really desperate and really, um, upset the that the slugs were uh, eating my crop. I, I wouldn't start with that. The other thing I learned uh, is that there are, um, there's copper tape that you can put on the outside of your pots and you would put two, um, one on top of the other, and, um, and then you electrify them with a nine volt battery. And the idea is the slug will come across the first uh, piece of tape, copper tape, um, and then, and he'll be fine until he reaches the second tape. And then I guess, I guess he becomes the conductor. I don't know. And, um, he is then deterred from coming into your pot and eating your vegetables. Um, I haven't tried this. I think, I think I would try something else first, but it is an option. Diatomaceous earth. I had to look up how to say that or DE is a lot easier to say. Uh, that's another option that I have used. Um, I've used it uh, with my chickens. Um, I put it around in their coop and then um, the little mites and that kind of stuff will eat it and, and they kind of dry out um, from the inside. I don't know really how that works, but um, DE is pretty inexpensive. It's a powder and you would just shake it around um, the ground. It will not harm you if you eat it. Um, there's food grades actually. Um, anyway, and then you put it around and so it won't harm you. It's more organic than say some other, um, some other options I'm going to mention. The other thing is eggshells. Uh, but if you're going to use eggshells, you have to dry them out. You bake them until they are dried and then you can crush them up and put them in a nice ring, uh, around your crop. Do not put them on um, if they still have that wet stuff inside because that will actually attract slugs and snails to your plants and that is opposite of what you want to do. The next pest I want to talk to you about squash bugs. They are almost the bug that should not be named. I hate them. Like I hate, nah, I hate sin and I hate cancer. Okay, I loathe them. Uh, they are one of my nemeses, along with deer and squirrels, squash bugs. So the things that you are going to have to really protect them from, of course, squash, uh, but also different zucchinis and uh, pumpkin and gores, that kind of stuff. How you're going to know if you have them is you're going to go out and be a good gardener and inspect your crops and look on the underside of 
I'm holding my hand over as if you can see it, which you can't. Okay. You're going to turn over the bottom of the squash leaves and you're going to see little bitty dots um, on the bottom. Those are the eggs. They're going to be gathered and um, you can admire them. Good little squash bug mom and, and putting them on there in a really nice, interesting way. Um, but then you, they must die. They must die a horrible death. Um, personally, I get great enjoyment out of literally squashing them. Maybe that's why they call them squash bugs. But I, I rip off the corner of the leaf where the bugs are, or the, the eggs are, and then I grind them underfoot and I laugh maniacally. If they have gone on too long and I have forgotten um, about them and I need to go out and do a bunch, I get a bucket of soapy water and I just start ripping off the leaves that have this, um, the eggs on them and then I dump them in the soapy water and I wait until they get a whole bunch and then I go and I deposit them far away from my house and that usually gets rid of them. If you see the squash bugs, um, you're going to have to pluck them off and kill them. Um, that is the most organic way to do that. I try to be an organic gardener and I try not to um, put chemicals on them, but seven dust. Seven dust um, has come into my garden and um, I will use it on them. I do not like to use it on them unless I have a really big uh, outbreak of them, but I will use it um, because I want to eat those zucchini. I don't want another plant or another animal to eat those. So I will use seven dust. Uh, you need to be vigilant about them and you need to come out, I would say, every day for a while just to make sure that you don't have them and then every other day or so um, once you know that they're under control. The thing with the seven dust is that you need to be very sparingly when you use them because you don't want to affect the bees that come to your zucchini because you do need uh, the bees to cross pollinate the, the male and the female flower. So they need to do that. If you use seven dust and you don't have any bees, you're going to have to um, do a little work yourself. And, and I've done that too, um, bringing the male uh, flower over to the female flower. And then you are guaranteed to get a zucchini. Um, but just, just a heads up about that. The last bug that I have in my garden that really plagues me is the tomato hornworm. Uh, I don't mind these as much as the squash bugs because they're pretty easy to get rid of. They start off as a little green dot on your plant and so you might come across those if so destroy them. Then they come out and they look like a little green inchworm. You need to kill them as soon as you see them. If you don't see them and um, because they do hide and they kind of have a uh, camouflage they kind of look like a tomato leaf um, you're going to notice that you have them two different ways that you can two different ways that you can know if you have them number one I usually see their poop first they look like um, they're about this big and they look like little grenades if you go out and you are inspecting your tomato plants um, talking to them having your coffee having a little chat with your tomato plants some people might do that. Uh, then you're gonna see these little grenades and you're gonna start looking for the tomato hornworm. You can also see, if you have them, if your tomato plant starts shrinking and you can see damage and they eat from the top to the bottom. And so if you go out one day and your plant is three feet tall and the next day it's about two and a half feet tall, then you're gonna have to start looking around and seeing <laughs> what is eating your your tomato plant and it will very much likely be the tomato hornworm they can get i've had them as big as my uh, pinky finger before i found them before so uh, they're easy to get off you can either pluck them off and and dispose of them um, like i said i go out um oh i have a bug on my hat 
Hmm. Imagine that outside talking about bugs. I have a bug on my hat. Um, I go out often with my coffee uh, in the morning and stroll around my garden. Sometimes I go out in the afternoon when I need a little bit of sanity uh, and I bring my scissors with me and I just cut them. It's kind of mean. I, I get that. It's kind of mean, but I cut them and I watch the green ooze come down and dribble onto the rest of the tomato plant as a warning to all other tomato hornworms not to come near my garden. It's kind of like a beware. This gardener is serious. So anyway, tomato hornworm, squash bugs, slugs and snails, those are going to be your main culprits um, as far as bugs eating your garden.